It could be anybody. Anybody could be experiencing domestic violence behind the scenes. And 25 years ago, that anybody was Wendy Johnson, only she wouldn't realize it until several years later. I was married. I had a young daughter and I was working full time and it was my first marriage and I thought I was living life the way you live it. Slowly, the honeymoon phase was chipped away as instances of jealousy, intimidation, and isolation crept in. Eventually, it escalated. It was just a disagreement like couples have, and it kind of got heated, and he was coming like going to do that intimidation thing, and it was a little bit stronger than normal, so I took off running to the bathroom, and he got there just as I was shutting the door and then threw the door open, and we kind of exchanged words, and then he just started choking me. And, you know, I remember everything was getting really bright, and then the next thing I know, I woke up on the bathroom floor, and I went out, and he had almost a whole cigarette smoked, so I had been out all that time. She didn't call the cops. She didn't even recognize her invisible injury as domestic violence, but she did recognize she'd changed. I'd get very angry really quick, and that wasn't like me. I had a lot of anxiety. I didn't sleep real well. It wouldn't be until many years later, long after her marriage had dissolved, that she discovered they were all signs of a traumatic brain injury. It's more of a silent epidemic. Joyce Wright with the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services says Wendy's situation is not at all uncommon. Not only do people not correlate uh, brain injury with domestic violence, I, don't, I also think that a lot of times people don't correlate domestic violence with brain injury. And so it goes underreported. She adds even when survivors do seek help, they may be mischaracterized. The reactions or the impact that you see uh, stemming from the brain injury may have a um, individual labeled as being hostile or uncooperative or hard to get along with or indecisive. And much of that is because research on brain injuries has been largely exclusive to athletes and car crash victims. But Dr. Bethany Brown with Central Michigan University says that's just beginning to change. In a study that was recently released by Ohio State University um, in 2019, they looked at women who came into the doctor's office and complained of being abused and found that 83% of them had been strangled and 81% of them had suffered a traumatic brain injury, being hit or shoved up against a wall, something of that form. Scans and tests don't always reveal a traumatic brain injury, so it's critical to review a patient's history and look for symptoms like the inability to sleep, regulate emotions, focus, or remember. That's why she says making survivors as well as medical and law enforcement professionals aware of the connection between brain injuries and domestic violence is so important. For knowing that these traumatic brain injuries could be a part of that can help us care for them better. And caring for those just like her is exactly what Wendy Johnson is doing now, sharing how she too has been forever changed with survivors at Rise Advocacy in Mount Pleasant. So even though you get the ugly of the ugly, you also get the most beautiful of the most beautiful, too. It may not have been what she imagined for herself 30 years ago, but she says it was fate. But God has a way. Dr. Brown says she now spends an entire week in CMU's new nursing program helping train future medical professionals about domestic violence, including brain injuries. If you or someone you know needs to talk with someone about domestic violence, we've linked many local resources in this story on WNEM.com.